welcome to the Double T Insider. I'm Caitlin Kravick alongside Brett Brown, bringing you the inside access into Texas Tech athletics. In this week's episode, we visit with one of Red Raider basketball's top leaders, junior guard Todrick Gocher. We also sit down with a new addition to Lady Raider basketball, junior Kansas native Ryan Bowser. And later, we speak with head coach of the Lady Raiders, heading into her second season at her alma mater, Candy Whitaker. We also go on the clock with Red Raider Volleyball's Brianne David. Red Raider Basketball took on Texas A&M Commerce inside the United Supermarkets Arena this past weekend. Texas Tech went head-to-head -head with Texas A&M Commerce throughout the entire game. In the first period, the Lions were successful early on, starting off the game with a 10-3 run in the first five minutes. However, the Red Raiders were able to tie the score 25-25 before heading into halftime. Early in the second half, the Lions had the advantage over Tech and at one time had a 10-point lead over the Red Raiders. Key shots were made by the underclassmen, including a three-pointer by freshman Zach Smith with a minute left in the second. The Red Raiders were able to tie the second half 61-61, heading into overtime. Throughout overtime, the Red Raiders were just one step short of the Lions, who took a victory over Texas Tech 72-69. The Red Raiders will face Loyola this Friday in Lubbock at 8 p.m. Central. Coming up after the break, we speak with junior defensive lineman Brandon Jackson. Double T Insider is brought to you in part by Plains Capital Bank, a proud supporter of Texas Tech football. Ride with the good guys at Plains Capital Bank, Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. Visit RedRaidersContest.game to register to win cool fan experiences. And by Texas Ford dealers. Visit your Texas Ford dealer today. Ford is the best in Texas. Welcome back to the Double T Insider. I'm Alexandra Haley. This week we feature Red Raider football junior defensive lineman Brandon Jackson. My name is Brandon Jackson. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I play defense in, defensive tackle, and nose tackle. Uh, Texas Tech, when they recruited me, really uh, press the issue of family and how close it is and how um, the city responds to you and how everyone is kind of like your, your aunt and your uncle and things like that. And um, I mean, I'm from a small town where everyone disciplines you if you do wrong. So that's kind of something that attracted me here. And I was like, might as well go somewhere where I, it feels like home. I mean, that was the biggest adjustment when I was uh, younger coming in to try to get, get, be able to play at the level that, uh, at the, co the collegiate level. And um, in high school, you know, everything is kind of dominated by the players who are just more athletic and um, here at the collegiate level, especially in the Big 12, with the high tempo offices and the way they spread you out, you kind of um, your speed, you know, kind of doesn't get shown as many times because they're such, it's such a technical game. And um, I mean, my adjustment has been the biggest uh, improvement I feel like this year. And um, there's something that you have to steadily, steadily improve because offenses are getting more complex. Uh, this coaching staff has forced me to become a leader. Coach Kingsbury and Coach Mike Smith, they kind of got me in there to uh, start embracing my teammates. And, you know, now I love these guys like my brothers. And um, I'm, I'm playing confident and I'm starting to play for them and not just for myself. I mean, they say attitude reflects leadership and Coach Smith coaches with a lot of, a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of attitude. And um, he's very passionate, and, you know, and we, we kind of feed off of that. We want to make our coach proud and we all love him. And we're trying to become a passionate group and play excited and you know, kind of get back to the basics where it's just like us out there in the backyard running around having fun and celebrating when we do do something good. Uh, I'm, I'm more of a <laughs> lead by example type of guy. I don't really like to scream and holler. I kind of do as I do and I hope that they follow. And if I see someone slipping, or someone not giving their all, then I'll voice my opinion, but I'm not a, a screaming guy on every down. I've just been telling them that uh, just play your game at the end of the day. It's a game you've been playing all your life, the game you love to play. And you know, as, as no matter how hard it is, how, how bad the score or how good the score is, at the end of the day, it's just a football game. The same game you've played just since you were 12. You know, don't make it more than what it really is. I've definitely grown the closest to uh, JJ Gaines and Samuel Iguavin. You know, we came in together in 2011 and we were in the same dorm as freshmen and kind of grew up and moved off campus together. Those they just, just kind of been my brothers in arms and you know, me being from Pittsburgh, on the little holidays that we do have when we're allowed to go somewhere, I always go home with their families and they've accepted me. Well, um, my major is sociology with emphasis in criminology. And I, it's really, I really want to go the criminology route, but there's not a major at tech for criminology. So uh, that's just, I'm just listening to sociology. But uh, eventually I want to work for the government, be in the FBI or the CIA, kind of be a field agent type of thing. Honestly, it, it kind of came from my, um, my brother's uh, caseworker one, one day, I had my brother, when we were younger, he had a caseworker, and he was a kind of big influence on my life and just the way he looked at things, the way he dealt with troubled kids. And number nine is uh, 
you know, that story that came out last year or whatever, my, my brother had died and he in high school, he used number nine, that was his number. And then um, after he died, you know, I kind of, I was kind of lost and I felt like he wasn't there for me and I wasn't there with him. And it was just a very difficult time. And the best way I felt like I could be close to him is whenever I go to practice or I go to the game, I wear his number. And you know, coach, coaches were a blessing and they allowed me to change from 90 to nine. And I've been wearing that number ever since. Coming up next, we spotlight Red Raider Hoops junior guard, Todrick Gocher. Todrick Gocher, shooting guard, Garland, Texas. Talk about your childhood and kind of where you grew up and how you got into playing basketball. Um, well, first of all, I have to give props to my parents. My father, he played uh, football at Baylor, so I was automatically in sports. And uh, as a child, I, I have videos of me shooting basketball, playing baseball, football, all the sports. So. I call myself a little superstar when I was a uh, little boy. Can you talk about what it means to you to be a student athlete at Tech? Academics obviously comes first. Uh, we're called student athletes for a reason. So um, I was blessed to get my degree in three years and it's all because of my coaches and Coach Smith getting on me about academics, tutoring. So it's a great thing just to have the Marshall Sharp and things like that to take advantage of to help us graduate early. And as a student athlete, it, uh, like student wise, I mean athlete wise, this is great. Uh, just playing in front of a crowd, going to places in the Big 12, and just traveling. So it's it's over. I'm very happy with where I'm at. What's some of the advice that you're giving some of the new guys on the team this year? I try to teach the young guys to value each possession, limit the turnovers, and get good shots. Uh, so that really helps in the long run. So this is your second year with Coach Smith. How has he changed you as a player, either mentally or just on the court? Uh, mentally, he's changed me dramatically. Uh, I watch film more, I understand the game more, and he's actually a teacher of the game, so uh, every aspect of the game I, uh, I have learned because of him, and uh, physically, um, just running the floor, getting up and down, and like learning the offense, so he really helped me out in that. What would you say is this uh, would be this team's biggest strengths this season? Uh, transition, uh, transition. We we're gonna go up and down the floor a lot, and we're gonna get a lot of lobs and a lot of layups. So that's our that's our uh, thing that we're gonna go off of, and that should be our motto. Talk about the importance of having a rowdy, in a good way, fan base like Tech has, especially during those big conference games. I love them all. Uh, when we go to football games, they they see us and they tell us how proud they are of us. So I just love the Tech fans and. I wouldn't, I think we're the best in the country, so I wouldn't have it any other way. And being one of the older players on the squad, um, how has this experience been for you? Has it been what you thought it would be, being a college athlete? Actually, it's over what I thought it would be. Um, I'm, I'm very impressed how tech is and how the campus and the student life and just the fans treat us. Um, I, I thought, it was, I knew it was going to be a college-based basketball team, but they overdo it and they show a lot of love to the basketball players, the football players, so I really love it. What kind of legacy do you hope to leave at Texas Tech when your time is up? What are you trying to instill in the other players on the team? Energy. I, I love to be energetic and uh, get the crowd involved, so I, I want to install energy and just uh, when, when I'm done playing, I want them to remember how energetic I was on the floor and just I played every position. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, we feature Ryan Bowser of the Lady Raiders. Welcome back to the show. This week, we visit with junior transfer Ryan Bowser. I'm Ryan Bowser, Holton, Kansas, junior. I'm point guard. I'm Holton, Kansas, it's a small town, about 4,000 people. I graduated with like 80, so small town feel. It's kind of different from here, having so many kids and stuff. I went to a junior college that only had like 400 kids too, so the intensity, um, what you, you have to be in the right spot at the right time all the time. Like you can't be out of position because people are too athletic and they'll you know, beat you, so you have to be, I mean, you have to be very disciplined to play at the collegiate level. I love the team. I'm very comfortable around them. I mean, they're all caring, kind. They always have my back, you know, I have theirs. I think working hard, I think we work hard every day for the most part. Um, I mean, if you work hard every day, then you'll have success. Um, I feel like we're more disciplined than the team last year. We're more of a one unit instead of four units or whatever. I feel like everyone's on the same page. Everyone has the same goal and purpose to be here. Kelsey and Minta mostly um, very communi like communicate all the time. They always know what they know what they're doing, you know, and they help us out. The new people who don't really know the plays and stuff. But I would say those two 
are the biggest leaders on the team. I think just the opportunity, having the opportunity to come to Tech and be a student athlete is, you know, saying something. I don't know, I just feel honored, I guess, thankful, blessed. They might not know that I'm a very family-oriented person. Like, I love fam my family. My family is like my biggest support system. I have a brother and sister within three years of me, so my brother and sister are my best friends. Just staying focused, know what my role is on the team, know what I need to be doing. Um, making sure that the team is also focused, prepared. You can't, you know, you can't have a bad practice the day before a game because you're gonna, you're gonna perform like that, like how you did. I'll just say staying focused, knowing what, um, what I want to get accomplished that day in the game, which is a win. After the break, Coach Candy Whitaker previews the Lady Raiders' upcoming season. This week, we speak with head coach of the Lady Raiders, Candy Whitaker. You know, growing up in this area, you dreamed of being a Lady Raider. Um, you know, they were so dominant um, for so many years and had a tremendous program and, and the amount of fans that they drew and um, the loyalty of those fans really made the program special. Started playing basketball in third grade. My mom was a very good player. Um, she played at Sam Houston State and uh, was invited for USA Basketball back in her day. And grew up with, um, with a basketball parent. My sister uh, was older than me and played, so I was course followed in her footsteps and um, you know started started then and, and fell in love with it. My mom was actually my seventh grade coach and of course growing up um, I think she had the first influence on me as far as my knowledge of the game and then um, Joe Lombard my high school coach and um, Jim Littell who's now, now the head coach at Oklahoma State um, who was my coach at Seward County and, and of course coach Sharp all influenced me but I think you learn a lot when you become a coach and you learn a lot um, from the coaches you're around and every coach I've had the privilege of working for and with influenced me and taught me a lot. Um, and, and then you learn by doing. You know, I was fortunate to be a head coach at a very young age, and um, so I learned a lot just from trial and error and trying to figure out my own way. I try to obviously lead by example and, and, and do what I'm asking my players to do um, and, and be committed at an extremely high level that shows them that. Um, but I, I consider myself a teacher first. We're going to teach the game. Um, we're going to. Um, take every moment we can to explain why we're doing what we're doing and, and help them understand the concepts of things because then they're able to make decisions on their own. You know, I think coaches make mistakes when they just teach kids how to run a play and not you know, the right reads and why they're doing what they're doing. So um, very much a teacher, very much hands-on. I'm out there demonstrating, playing, you know, whatever needs to be done, out there trying to help them learn in any way they can. The team chemistry has been great. I think they've done a great job of bonding outside of basketball and on the floor and really helping each other through it. Um, the returners have done a good job of um, bringing them in to, to you know, what, what they learned from last year and, and kind of our style and our expectations. So excited to continue to watch this group grow. Uh, they practice really well. Um, they have very much team first mentality and um, so excited to see you know, where they can end up. People lead in a lot of different ways, and I think that we have several leaders on the team. Kelsey Baker is someone who's been battle-tested um, as a fifth-year senior and um, very vocal, great, great feel for the game, and I think she can really help other people along understanding things at a higher level. Um, Amber Battle works extremely hard. Raven Brooks goes hard every day. Um, Minta Spears is someone who cares more about her team than herself, and, and so I think there's a lot of leaders, and they lead in different ways. We want um, them to love coming to Lady Raider basketball games and we want them to appreciate what we do on the floor and how hard we're going to work and we come to work every day wanting them to be a part of it and it's what makes this program so special. Get your timer set. We're going on the clock with Red Raider Volleyball's Breanne David. Double T Insider here, about to go on the clock with Brianne David. A game where I'll give Brianne 10 scenarios that she has to answer in under 60 seconds. All right, Brianne, do you think you can do this? I don't know. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll see. 60 seconds on the clock, please. First question, if I could travel anywhere in the world, I would first travel to Australia. If I had any superpower, it would be to um, heal people. <laughs> if I didn't play volleyball, I would play? Um, I would run track. If I could have dinner with any person, living or dead, it would be? Jesus. <laughs> My favorite home-cooked meal is? Um, gumbo. If I could see any musician live, it would be? Oh, 
Uh, Beyonce. <laughs> if I won the lottery, the first thing I would buy is... A horse. <laughs> The, my teammate with the worst singing voice is... It's gotta be me. <laughs> my favorite TV show growing up was... Um, the Rugrats. And last question, my go-to selfie pose is... Uh, I don't take selfies. <laughs> 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 All right, well, congratulations. You beat the clock. Oh, did I? I thought that Even like... with no selfie, okay. I guess. <laughs> For the Double T Insider, I'm Caitlin Kravick, and we just went on the clock with Brianne David. Coming up after the break, we take a look at the best tweets around Texas Tech athletics. Welcome back to the Double T Insider. I'm Luke Heath. Each week, we pick the best tweets about Texas Tech athletics and air them right here on the show. Our first tweet comes from Pat Flynn, who tweeted, TTU equipment have done an awesome job with all Under Armour uniforms. At Uniform Swag, hashtag Team UA. Tech Athletics tweeted about football saying, Texas Tech student section ranked among the best in college football by USA Today Sports. Hashtag Reckham. Former football player Jason Morrow tweeted, second touchdown of the career with a W. Feels really good right now. Eric Ward tweeted about football saying, thanks to our fearless fans, this is the first time in Tech history there have been four home sellouts. Hashtag Reckham. Tech basketball player Clark Lambert tweeted, The whole team signed this card for me. Love my teammates. Hashtag Reckham. Well, that's all the tweets for this week's episode, but be sure to follow the Double T Insider on Twitter and check back with us next week when your tweet could just be featured on the show. Now let's take a look at Texas Tech's upcoming games. Friday, Kenny Whitaker and the Lady Raider basketball team begin the regular season as they face Jacksonville State. Tip-off from the United Supermarkets Arena in Lubbock, Texas is at 5.30 p.m. Central. Texas Tech men's basketball concludes their three-game homestand Friday. Tip-off against Loyola is at 8 p.m. Central. Saturday, Red Raider football will face Oklahoma from Jones AT&T Stadium in Lubbock, Texas. This will be the final home game for the Red Raiders. Kickoff is scheduled to begin at 2.30 p.m. Central. Texas Tech volleyball will be in Morgantown Saturday as they take on West Virginia. First set is at 2.30 p.m. Central. Lady Raider basketball continues their four-game homestand Tuesday as they face Texas State. Tip-off against the Bobcats is at 7 p.m. Central. Tuesday, Texas Tech men's basketball travels for the first time as they take on LSU. Tip-offs at 8.30 p.m. Central. Wednesday, Red Raider volleyball faces TCU from Fort Worth, Texas. First set is at 7 p.m. Central. The Double T Insider will be right back after the break. Double T Insider was brought to you in part by UMC Health System. It's our hospital. Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. Visit RedRaidersContest.game to register to win cool fan experiences. Red Raider Club. Your support, their effort, our fearless champions. And by Texas Ford Dealers. Visit your Texas Ford dealer today. Ford is the best in Texas. Well, that's a wrap for this week's episode of the Double T Insider. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter to stay up to date with Texas Tech Athletics. For Caitlin Kravick, I'm Brett Brown, and until next time, guns up.